Hello again. Today we're going to be looking at temperature drift. One of the things I see posted quite a bit is about how the Unity UT61E will drift. I had ran a study before where I had cycled all the meters that I had available from minus 10 to 50 degrees Celsius and I used a 1 volt test signal. And unfortunately with that 1 volt test signal I really didn't gleam a whole lot of information out of that. Because the UT61E is such a high resolution meter what I'd like to do is go back and rerun the test using a 1 millivolt signal. These are all the high res meters I have except for this little Bryman. Uh, this does not have the resolution of these other meters. When I first ran my test I didn't have the UT61E available. I also didn't have the EEV blog BM235. And you may remember from that previous testing as the TPI194 would not run down at minus 10 degrees C. It was the only meter of the group that I ran that couldn't run down that low. So unfortunately for these tests I won't be able to run the TPI-194. Again this meter is damaged anyway but it does work in voltage mode. This is the data I collected from the very first temperature test that I ran. You can see I'm using a 1 volt reference signal from my Fluke 731B and I collected data at minus 10 degrees C and 40 degrees C. And if we look at the delta you can see it's a little difficult to tell for example, the 17B Plus shows 0.995 and 0.995, so it just doesn't have enough resolution to actually see the drift. So we can see I repeated this test using the UT181A, the XTEC EX540, the UT61E, the Bryman BM235, and the BM869S. And you can see I've increased the temperature range from minus 20 to 60 degrees Celsius. And I'm now using a 1 millivolt DC from the Fluke reference. And if we look at our delta now in millivolts, we can see the Unity 181 has a 13 microvolt drift. Where the Bryman BM869 has a 89 microvolt drift. Next would be the BM-235 at 230 microvolts adrift. And then the Unity UT-61E at 410 microvolts adrift. And then the EX-540 which had 570 microvolts adrift. So by far the worst meter in the group was the X-Tech EX-540. And the cost for this meter is about $300. We compare that with the UT61E at about $50. Just because of the high cost of the XTEC EX540, we'd expect it to outperform the Unity UT61E. Unfortunately, that was not the case. I was curious then if I could improve the UT61E's temperature drift. This is a website where they're talking about improving the temperature drift of the UT61E. And we can see they're talking about adding an external reference. You can see they've chosen the Linear Technology 1790 voltage reference. This device has a 10 or 25 ppm per degree C temperature coefficient. Here they show the schematics for the UT61E. And this is the schematic that they're proposing for the LT1790. And we can see in this picture that the older circuit board revisions actually supported the LT1790 for an external reference. So they had various resistors, it looks like, and capacitors that were set for a no pop. We would change these around depending on if we were going to use the internal reference or the external. I looked at the price of purchasing the reference from DigiKey. It's about an $8 device. By the time I bought some low temperature coefficient resistors to go along with it, I figured it would cost me about $15 to try this out. It may be possible to improve the temperature stability at a much lower cost. So I brought out 5K wise meter and again I started comparing this against the meter that I purchased. These are the pictures from 5K wise meter. And what we can see is there's definitely a difference between the two potentiometers that they've used. On 5K wise meter, it's an unmarked device. It's a 3296 package and it's a 2K part. In my meter it's a JML device. Looking at the data sheet for the JML part 
we can see it has a plus or minus 200 ppm per degree C temperature coefficient. So I don't know the temperature coefficient of the resistors that they used. We can see that for R16 they actually used a different package size. These are both 7.5k ohm resistors. You can see this little ball from their processing. Looking at 5k wise meter, this pot was trimmed for 656 ohms, and on mine it was trimmed for 533 ohms. So one of the things I was wondering is also about reducing the value of this pot. Uh, one of the things when I tried to adjust it is it's very sensitive. So by going to a smaller potentiometer, it should make it a little less sensitive for the adjustment. This is the part that came out of mine, and this is the part that I plan to replace it with. This part's made by Borns. You can see it was made in Costa Rica. This is actually a 1K device, 10 turn pot. You can see the adjustments coming out of the top instead of off the side. Uh, same pin out. Just looking at the data sheet for the Borns device. We can see they're calling for a temperature coefficient of plus minus 100 ppm per degree C. This was the very first set of tests that I ran. Um, unfortunately, I can't take pictures of the meters through the glass door. This give you an idea what it kind of looks like trying to shoot through that glass. So what I have to do is just basically write down the numbers and record them manually. You can see in this picture that I've gone ahead and removed R16 and R15. The potentiometer has also been removed. We can also see on the top side of the board that the potentiometer VR1 was removed along with C17. After swapping out those components, I went ahead and readjusted VR1 using a standard diddle stick. I then ran the temperature up to 60 degrees Celsius. And we can see the meter drifted almost 400 millivolts. So unfortunately we actually made the meter worse. So we start out with the x tech EX540 being the worst. Again, this is about a $300 meter. Next came the Unity UT61E, followed by Dave's EV Blog BM235, and then my Brahman BM869S, and finally the Unity UT181A was the most stable. So even after making the changes to the UT61E, this meter actually became a little worse than what this EX540 was. So I'd like to know, because this meter is used by so many hobbyists, and one of the big draws is that people don't want to spend a lot of money, I don't think, on a meter when they buy this thing. I don't think adding another $15 to achieve a good voltage reference for this is something that a lot of people are going to be able to afford to do. What I'd like to know is if we can achieve some pretty good results without spending a whole lot of money. I think if we could get it at least as good as what Dave's BM235 is, we'd be in pretty good shape. So let me go ahead and I'll show you what I'm planning on doing. I think before we get into the mods, I was going to mention that I purchased this Unity back in March of 2016. And we can see in the upper right, it still has one bar left on the first charge. Gives you some idea how much I've used the meter since I purchased it. The Bryman, of course, I purchased back in August of 2015. I changed out the battery one time so far in this meter. This meter actually gets used quite a bit. It's basically replaced my desktop meters for the most part. This is the schematic for the UT61. If we look at both the one that 5KY sent me and the one that I purchased, both of those meters use a 7.5K ohm resistor. Looking at VR1, the schematics call for a 1K potentiometer. And again, both 5KYs and my UT61 use a 2K pot. And then these two resistors are in parallel with a 4.7 microfarad tantalum capacitor. So when I ran that last temperature test, you could see at 60 degrees Celsius, it went all the way from 1 millivolt down to 610 microvolts. So as the temperature is going up, the voltage being displayed is going down. So what I'd like to do is put a diode in series with this. And then in series with the resistor, right across this capacitor. And what we're going to do is we'll tune this value of resistor to try to get this temperature coefficient of this to match such that I can get this curve to flatten out a little bit. So we'll probably have to do some different sweeps with this, but this would be a very cheap solution.
Here we can see the modification that I've made to improve the temperature drift. This is a BAV199 and currently this is a 6.65 K ohm resistor. We can see these two are in series and placed in parallel across C17. This is our beeper up here. Over here is our potentiometer. If we look at the voltage across this capacitor, this side's the positive and this is the negative. This diode is in forward conduction in this direction. This is looking at the data we just collected. This bottom row represents our modified Unity UT61E. Again, the last combination I ended up with was a BAV199 in series with a 6.65K ohm resistor. And again, those are placed across C17. We can see at minus 20 degrees Celsius, it was at 970 microvolts. And at 60 degrees Celsius, it was 102. That gives us a total drift of 50 microvolts. Again, looking at the XTEC EX540, it was 570. The original UT61E was 410. So we've dramatically improved on what it was originally. Dave's rebranded Bryman BM235 is 230 microvolts. So we are now better than that by quite a bit. And also the Bryman BM869S is 89 microvolts, and we have exceeded that. We have not beat the Unity UT181A though at 13 microvolts. But still quite a bit of an improvement, and you can see I basically spent no money to achieve that. I could have probably left the original trimmer in there, although I'm glad that I changed that out to a 1K Borns. And again, that trimmer just gives me twice the mechanical advantage, so it allows me to desensitize that trimming just a little bit. Again, you can see in this video, we've taken a $50 meter, and we've exceeded the temperature drift of our Bryman BM869. And we didn't spend a whole lot of money to do it, just a diode and a resistor, and a lot of testing. <laughs> so again, is a meter like this worth investing that kind of time? Probably not. Would those values work for your particular meter? I doubt it. You'd probably have to retrim those based on your particular meter. But it can be done if you had the resources available. Well, I think that's going to be it for the video. Again, I'd like to welcome any of you new members. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Till the next meter. Later.